Y también puede suceder que yo quiero experimentar. Version without uh, disturbing the rest of the development team, and then if I decide that what I'm developing is good, I would integrate it to to the to the rest of the team. Perhaps I, I even discard it. I don't know, depending on what I have to do. So these are some of the times when I'm going to define versions, particularly in the KB I'm describing here in the tab version of the Nexus server, we can see the versions this application has gone through. We always work with a main development version. We call it trunk. Once, as I said, this application has evolved and uh, we decided to release version 1.0. A freeze of the version was, was made. We went on working. New functionalities were added or new modules were added. Uh, two point, uh, version 2.0 was released and uh, we defined what we call uh, a hot fix or a fixes version, perhaps to correct um, any bug that uh, we wanted to correct in this version. I'm going to see now what the recommendation we make for those changes is. And then we're going to continue working on the main development version. Now, what are my comments then about these versions? Well, I'm sorry, here. The new versions, we always recommend defining them in the server, in the console of Genexus server from the top versions. I'm positioned, I'm standing in, on one version. I can freeze or I can define new versions. But whenever I want to define a new version, I would do it in my Genexus server. And then, if I have to modify the objects of that version, then, as we said earlier, I would have a, I would make a create KB server from that particular version. Here we have the dialog. I have the URL of the server I'm working on. And uh, here I can indicate the version to which I would like to connect. And in this case, I would use the fixes version 2.0 because that's uh, where I will have to make some corrections or modifications. Now, once I do this, that developer in his uh, local KB will be targeting the version in the server. So please take into account then, when you choose a version, you do it from the, the Nexus uh, console, but when I want to modify the objects or the content of a version, you would do it in a local um, uh, server, a KB targeting the KB server for the version I have to work on. And I've got a question. Yes, microphone, please. In case the client, because I've got a client, had a case with a relatively big KB before using Genexus server. It was a local one. Now he acquired Genexus server, started working, and he wanted to have his main KB to the server. But he didn't want to create the version in the server once again. So what would be the recommendation in that case? You know, for s someone who is using Genexus server in the main KB, or or do you have to take up all the version? No. I mean, this is generally done in this way when we start working for the first time on a KB that has no def local defined versions. But in, if I'm already working on a Genexus KB with my own versions, tree of versions, then I can send it to the server, and it would be published in uh, in Genexus server. I mean, that KB will be there with all its versions, and then any developer who would like to uh, do a 
K, uh, server KB with a certain version, you could do it. So I can create a KB from the server with all the versions, or I can send a KB to the server with all the versions. You can do that with no problem. Thank you. Hello. Okay. I'm sorry, he's not using the mic. We are working with the X server, and the users have created the KBs of each one of the developers from the X server. Now, if I create directly a version inside the X server to see, well, this is a version that I have sent to production. The users, the developers, have to create a new KB from that version. Well, nowadays, yes. At the moment, we still don't have the option when you define a version in the server of bringing only that version and that it is added to the KB the developers already had. This is something we are working on and intend to have in the next upgrades or the next version of GenXus. We'll see what the development team will have this ready, but this scenario should be available in the future. The option right now is to do a new KB based on the version on which you want to work. Well, in this regard, I have a comment. Something that happens in other versions and not in the current one. You have to be careful because there are developers that don't like to handle versions because it's like a straight jacket for what they are doing. So when you have the freedom to define things locally and this afterwards is added to a common version and uh, downloaded, each one will make parallel versions that add up and they may clash against each other. There may be contradictory changes because he had the KB in a way, me, I had it in a different way. They look like new features, but then they mix and I upload what I have. But when the other developer does the same thing, the change I made may be in conflict with the change that he had already made. So the way things function now, this is not possible to do. There was a developer in our case that had a lot of trouble uh, entering this role, and he started to freeze a series of report, and uh, he froze many, changed all of them, didn't make the commit again ever, and when we told him that he had to make the commits, he did everything at the same time. At the same time, and he had his uh, local versions, and uh, for me, at the time, well, we're not using GeneXus, but for me, it's very good uh, that how we work with GeneXus because I have to download the updated GeneXus uh, first and foremost, and. Uh, this is the basis. So I don't know what you will do when you have the feature because it would be possible to have conflicts when you have uh, when you introduce the, the future changes. Thank you. I will take this into account and maybe Gonzalo would like to say something in this regard. But let's clarify that one thing is a version that we add to a KB on which we're working. And a different thing is the conflicts of objects that happens when you want to do commit and the object is modified in the server, and first you have to do an update, and that's where the conflict arises. This is related to the conflicts that can happen between objects of a sa the same version. But here we have uh, different versions. Yes, but I wasn't referring to this. I was referring to a functional conflict. I attacked the problem from a different angle, a 
did two more tables and he saw it in a different way when it became local and now we have four more tables some of them are redundant he is going to do it in one way i'm going to do it in a different way and it's not that there is there are actual conflict it there is a philosophical problem Yes, maybe it's a problem of methodology, the way the team works, because if you have to create new transactions, the idea is to create them in one place, then commit, and then update the changes. Yes, but since you say that in the future you can you will be able to mix what you have in the X server, etc. No, that's only when a new version is defined. For all the objects of the KB, you make a new version. Is the same thing as defining versions in GenXus. It's not a version of the object. From the versions of GenXus, you create a new version of KB. That is why when we talk about versions, it may be a bit confusing. Okay, this is what Gonzalo was going to say. To say. Doctoras. Well, we have to talk about security too, but not specifically, but any question you have, we can discuss them here. Uh, yeah, at the end would be fine. Well, something that happened with the previous uh, X, GenXus X server was that when the developer downloaded the data to the new KB, the user controls were not there. Can you download now the user controls? Well, they have to be installed in the X server as in GenXus. Uh, we have not changed anything here. Gonzalo, you want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to say that we are working on this to improve it. Now there is a possibility of installing the user control in GenXus server from the marketplace. But we would still need the other scenario. And uh, with regard to the versions, as Sylvia said, our idea was precisely to be in the context of uh, one same KB and at the same time create versions of the server and locals and not need to create a new KB, but within the context of the versions. There's no conflict. There could be a conflict if you want to create a version with a name that already exists, but that's, that scenario already exists too. So. We continue. We are talking about the definition of versions in the GenXus server and how we can manage the versions or we modify the objects of the version. So I said we have to create a local KB that targets this version in particular. Now we are going to see an example of what I described earlier. If I have to make a change, for example, the client has is testing or, or has the version 2.0 in production and it has some error or we have to have some functionality the client has requested, where do we make this change in the 2.0 version on which is working, the main development version on which the developers are working? So we are going to use here, or we recommend in any case, here that the change is made firstly in the main version the main development version, and then there is an integration of the changes with the operation bring changes from the main version that the client is using. That is how we work in GenXus. If you report a problem or a new functionality is included, nowadays we define it first in version 15 of GenXus, and then we see to which other versions we take this arrangement, evolution three or others. But the recommendation is 
as far as possible to do it so. If there is something urgent and we cannot wait to make the change to the other versions, in the other versions, maybe I have to make the change in the version the client is using and then I integrate it in my main development. But in order to avoid conflicts and work orderly, it is recommended to make it in the main version and then integrate the change in the ver other versions as needed. So let's look at an example. The client has asked me to add two attributes to a transaction that he's already using the passenger version in this case, and he wants to add two attributes. So from a KB, which is connected to the main development version, we add these two attributes into the transaction. Once they have been added, I have to commit the object and the new to add the, the two new attributes so that the changes are also in GenX server. Then I define from a local KB, which uh, targets version 2.0 in this case, which is why I want to integrate the changes from the option team development. If I go to the history, I see all of the changes that were made in that version. And not only the changes of that version, I can also see the changes of any version. If we look at this more in detail, I'm in the window uh, team development of the KB, which uh, points to the 2.0 version. But I want to see the changes made in the main development version. This commit, where we added the two attributes, I want to bring them to the 2.0 version because my client wants it in this particular version. version, And I don't want the rest of the commits. I want this in particular, this one, which is the one my client needs. So I right click, bring changes. And this shows me in detail the commit, the two attributes that were made. The passenger transaction was modified. And this is what I want to integrate in this version. And when I press this button, merge, it's a, I have the merge of these objects in the 2.0 version that the client is using. And as we said, of course, this we have in the local KB with which we're working in GenXus. But we have to send these changes to the server so that they get integrated in the KB in the server. So again, I do commit over the 2.0 version so that the changes are integrated directly in the version that the client is using. So I can do a build of this version since I already have my production environment. And I've, I pass these changes to production. And these two attributes are now available for the client. If for some reason I wanted to bring all of the changes from one version to the other, I have the possibility of doing bring all changes. In particular, in this case, what I wanted was uh, commit in particular, but if I make changes here, I may want to integrate them to the main version because something may be urgent, for example. So I can do it too. But this option can cause more conflict. I'm doing changes here, and for sure I have changes here because it's my main version and the developers have continued working. So if I do it the other way around, there are less possibilities of conflict because in principle in this version we don't make local changes. We just bring the changes from another version. So it's an advantage of doing it in this manner. Another recommendation, doing backups. This should not be a recommendation because you all should all have your backup policies whereas for the KBs of the developers or of the server. But when we say do backups, what KBs are we talking about? 
all of the KBs I'm using, well, actually, if we look at, if we go back to what we have been saying in the Nexus server, all of the work is consolidated, and if you follow the recommendations I've said, periodical commits, uh, don't uh, leave too many objects for a commit, I am making sure that all of the work that is ready to go to production, all of the work I have done are is in GeneXus server. So it's enough to do a backup of the server's KB. If I have made sure that all the work is consolidated in it. The good recommendation is that although developers know when to do commits, if they do commits periodically, then we will know that all the work will be consolidated here and we do a backup and this solves all of the backups. Now, if for some reason the KB of the computer of a developer is lost, the last thing he changed without a commit will be lost. But let's try to minimize the possibilities of losses. Or if you have policies of committing your local KBs, that would be good. But if we concentrate on consolidating all of the work in the server, then a backup of the server would give us enough confidence. Well, but I'm sorry, we could not hear the question. We can't hear the comments. Now we are going to speak a little about the test KB. What I was saying was that the test KB or the production KB or the, I don't know how you call it in the company, uh, are missing here. Well, that's my opinion. Yes, could be, but if we think that we have defined versions for the different environments in which we work, the test environment, the production environment uh, versions inside the KB, doing a backup of the server KB will include everything else. Maybe you don't do it that way, but it's the way that we recommend. That we recommend. Yes, but I would add up the test KB. Let's say that you create a new test KB and maybe Not everybody knows that the names have been changed, etc. And then when you go into production, things don't run well. OK, let's add it then. We'll add it in the backup. Also with GAM, he said. Yes, but there you are talking of the database of the GAM. No, the KB. Okay, so we do a backup with it also. What I infer from what Pancho says is the following. I, I well actually I don't understand everything he's saying. I have two questions. Firstly, normally how after the fixing, how do you take it back to the trunk? All of the clients have a fix, have fixes because you forgot something, etc. And then you have to go back to the trunk with a series of things, and you downloaded this version and you release the fix to the client, and then you have to do all the rest. How do you get out of this mess in version two, in version four? This is one issue, but uh, maybe. You have a common answer for all these questions, so I'll ask all of them. When you freeze, one of the problems is that not everybody configures in the same way in the developer's KB. And what Pancho says is true, because you cannot put a fix and continue, because the databases uh, change. You should have not only a fix, but a database of what has been frozen. Because imagine a KB with a 6,000, 8,000 
objects. I, ha I do a branch and how do I continue working if I don't have the data? Obviously, you freeze, you do backup of everything, but there are a lot of things that remain manual and others that are in the domain of the repository. How can you solve this situation? Let's see if I understood your first question. You said, what happens if I have to make changes in this version and then I have to integrate them in the main version? Well, I separated and I started doing some fixes uh, for a client because I have a bug, but the developers continue working in module two. So how do I integrate the changes? Yes, I have downloaded this version. Uh, I worked in the local KB. I worked, I had to deploy to the client in this version. And I mean, what happens in production? Not only, not so much to what happens in the server because that would be sufficient with bring changes. Yes, exactly. The integration of the changes is with bring changes. To integrate changes from here to here, or from here to here, we always do it with bring changes. The operation is the same. What I said is that it could happen, as you said, that there's greater conflict if I make changes here and these same objects has already been transformed here. Well, in that case, there may be conflicts. conflicts. If Genetic Server can do the merger manually or automatically, automatically there's no problem, but maybe you have to solve it manually. Now, it may happen that I make a change here in order to correct an error, and I know that the error will be here too. Maybe the fixing will not be the same here than here, because if the object has changed or I had to make another change, maybe the same fixing for both versions is not exactly the same. I have to make a different fixing. Yeah, th this is very clear, but as a recommendation, which was the idea of this uh, presentation. What do most people do? They branch to do a fix or two or, three, two, th two or three things to fix, or they freeze versions and they make, uh, they arrange something in the trunk because you always have to do something manually. Well, the idea of correcting something in the main version is to download it immediately to the version I have to release and, re and release it in that one. But you're going to, you go from uh, right to left. So you're going back to the trunk. Well, once I've released, uh, once I made a change in the main version, I um, sent it to fixes and I made a commit in my fixes, I'm ready to release that uh, fix to my client. So you have um, a KB server and, uh, and the version is ready. For the test or production version takes up that uh, change and uh, releases it. Yeah, we're going to see that, how, how we follow this up. And uh, what about preferences? Something to unify and uh, distribute everyone the same instead of having to put uh, documents on the side. I mean, everyone, uh, you know, you install it and then the properties have a dynamic, some properties have a dynamic pattern and so it would destroy. Uh, yeah. Well, preferences are also stored in GenXo server, uh, not the user and the password for the uh, database, but the rest of the preferences, I mean, you can send you can make commits of the properties you've changed in your environment. Well, once again, we're talking about good practices. Well, you are asking about a property of dynamic pattern, and that is uh, certainly affecting the functioning of all. No. Are we synchronizing properties? Well, the idea it is that we do, and that uh, you synchronize properties. And that's why we have properties that we have defined as non-exportable, so that you can synchronize the important properties, the one you're interested in, without having any problems of conflict, you know, the password of the database or so on. And so th there you can see something that can be put in the version so it's part of the KB.
very well. So we talked about the backup. And uh, then to conclude, uh, what I was saying at the beginning was that um, the recommendation is to use separate working environments. We've been talking about the development of the application in our daily work, the daily work of developers. But now let's look at this KB that you have asked me about. Um, as, as, you, as we said, it's another KB, it's a separate one. Sometimes it's even created in a different um, machine. And that's the KB when I'm going to, where I'm going to synchronize the work of the developers. And on that basis, I'm going to make the deploy pack. Um, I'm going to have it ready for the um, test uh, team to run the scripts or any tests. And uh, it could even put it up on the cloud, you know, so the application is ready for the rest of the team to test it. And then on that basis, the application would be in production. As I said, our recommendation, there is a different characteristic, a different feature. Uh, and the recommendation is that you only make updates in that KB. What does that mean? Well, it means that there is no sense in making local changes in that KB, because if I make changes in that KB, then there may be more conflicts when I send out those conflicts. Now, if I make updates, I make sure that everything that gets to that KB went through the server, it's traced, you can trace it, you can trace all those objects in the Nexus server. So the ideal thing is to make updates of all the changes required to give to production, and then and to make the deploy, set up a package, uh, have it ready somewhere, take it up to the cloud, run the scripts, or perhaps the test team, uh, the testing team is making its um, manual tests. Now, those of us who have been working with previous GeneXus versions, we know that managing this KB is many times linked to having several steps that you have to follow. You have to do it from the KB server or and you have to integrate the work of all the developers, make the build, make the deploy, put the package and so on. With the server is something we can do many of those tasks automatically. And so when a person is in charge of doing that manually, uh, well, mistakes may be made, he may skip a step. So in general, when we work with this KB, it's, it's because we have to put it in production. And when you put it in production, you, you go through stress moments. You don't have much time to do it. And whenever you have to put something in production, time is limited. So um, it may happen that um, there are mistakes made that can affect uh, uh, more than in other cases. Of course, then the, the strawberry of this cake, what do you think would be the last recommendation I want to share with you? If I don't want to have someone only focus on that to do that exactly the same, yes, you want to do it automatically. So you have automatic bills. That is to try to automate everything that can be automated. That's a slogan that we try to follow closely. Therefore, how would I be working with this KB automatically? Well, if we go have a MS build task, and everything we can do for GeneXus can be done automatically, then all tasks associated to GeneXus server, the KB GeneXus server, the updater to bring in all changes to that KB, the build, the compilation, building the, the package and everything from um, end to end can be done automatically. This avoids uh, forgetting some steps. What happens if that person is on holidays? What are the steps that you have to follow? On the other hand, you make sure that all those objects are generated and compiled by the same GeneXus version by the same compiler, you know, you get new objects in production with a different JBAR, they don't work, you have errors. And so this is good practice to have this uh, automated. And then in turn, when you connect all this work with the 
cross control, then you can have a continuous in integration. You can do it repetitively and you can have everything automated in order to avoid mistakes. Well, I hope this has been useful. My recommendations have been useful that you apply them and use them in your daily work and that you apply the Nexus server to facilitate your work. I don't know if there are any questions, but this is what I wanted to share with you. So far, so good. Yes, there is a question over there. The continuous iteration that you mentioned, uh, are there any recommendations or anything? Well, what we recommend is using cruise control because precisely the repositories managed in GeneXus servers can be linked with cruise control and we can use it for um, continuous iteration. Our wiki uh, shows a step-by-step -step thing to be done. Although there are several steps, out of experience, in less than one day, you will keep it working. You have to make some configurations, but it's not something that will take you too long, and it truly facilitates your, your work. Thank you. Gonzalo, would you like to add something? Yes, I would like to add something to your answer. Internally, we use the Nexus server for part of our applications, and we do it in this um, cruise control mechanism. Something that you have to take into account is how often you want to make an update of the KB, and that depends on the frequency with which you make commits. If you do commits very frequently, then you would have to do this more frequently. The golden rule is that if you don't set um, the KB and there is a, an error in the build, you should cut off the KB. Yes, so that it's easier to identify what the commit given a problem was and try to solve it as soon as possible. Thank you. Now, in the case of using X server, as, uh, would this be the same? Well, yes, because it's at the level of the local KB that you're configuring all this. So this is an automatic process, but at the end of the day, it's a local KB connected to the KB server and um, would be connecting it. So, yes, it's the same. Very well. Thank you.